Alright, this is Uncle Jam back at it with another resource pack video. In this video, we are going to be going over custom color map options provided to us by Optifine. So what I mean by that is it allows you to change the color based on biome of various things in the game. Now, as you can see, the water here in the desert looks pretty kind of sandy and murky compared to in the forest here where it looks nice and blue. And in the swamp, it looks dirty and you can see it changes based on what biome we are in. As well as you may notice the sky is also changing as we change biomes. These are all results of custom color maps which we will show you how to create in the game. You can also do it for fog, you can do it for any block in the game as well. So I've done stone and I've matched it up with the water color map. So as you can see when I place the stone in the different biomes, the shading of it changes based on the color map that I have specified. So we're going to go over all of that in this video, and this video is going to assume that you also know how to make custom color maps. We covered it in our last video, and we showed you all the ways to create custom color maps. So if you are unsure about how to create a color map, make sure you check out that video in the top right hand corner of your screen. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright, so let me start off with letting you know what a color map image is. A color map is a 256 by 256 pixel image that the game will read and it will tell the game what colors to apply to a specific block. Now as covered in the last video, we went over the three types of color maps. There's the vanilla method, which is the triangle-like method. There's the fixed method, which is a fixed image color. And there is the grid method, which is provided to us by Optifine which uses the image as a grid of an X and Y coordinate graph and the X represents the biome ID and the Y represents the height of the world. If you want to see a breakdown and in-depth of those methods, check out the last episode. We're going to assume you have a basic understanding of those methods or which one you want to be using for your color map image. So the first step is you need to create your color map image using one of those methods. So let me create a color map image and I will show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so as you can see, I've created my color map image. Let me open it up and just show you what I've done. So I have used the grid method and I've just created some vibrant colors on various biomes just for demonstration purposes to show us that the color is changing. If you're confused about this method, once again, check out that previous tutorial. So what the game is going to do is it's going to take these colors that I have specified here and it's going to overlay them on top of the colors within our resource pack. The next step is we need to decide what we want this color map to apply to. So let me pull an image onto the screen and you can see we have a few options available. On the left hand side we have the swamp grass which is the grass in the swamp, the foliage in the swamp, we have pine leaves, birch leaves, and then we have water and underwater and under lava and the fog and sky. So those are some color maps that are provided to us by Optifine. Optifine allows us to edit those various things with a color map. And on custom, you see we have any in-game block. Now, if we wanted to do an in-game block or water for that matter, we actually need to create a grayscale texture that this color map will overlay on top of. Otherwise, if we kept, say, the water as blue water, it would just take this color map and mix it on top of the blue water. Now, sometimes that might be what you want. However, in this case, I don't want it to do that. So we need to head into our pack and create some grayscale images. So we're gonna head into our resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode 1 in the resource pack series. Head into assets, into minecraft, into textures, and into blocks. Now we want to locate the textures that we want to have our color map applied to. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do the water textures. So I'm just going to grab these textures here and open them up with Pixelmator. So as you can see, we have both the water images pulled up and they are blue. So we'll start off with the water still image here. Let me get rid of that one. And now we need to make this grayscale. 
So the method for your image editing software may vary in how you do this. However, you can do whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do colorize just because I wanna make it have a little bit of color. We will brighten it up here. Let's see if I can get it grayscale. Once again, keep in mind, you can make this any text, any color you want. The color map is just gonna mix and apply on top of this color. So it is best to have it grayscale. So as you can see, that's looking pretty gray scaled already. Maybe I will dim it down a bit here. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna export this image now. And we wanna make sure we keep it the same name. There we go. Export it as a PNG file, and we see it appear on the desktop. And once again, we'll just install it in our pack and replace the old watercolor. Now you can do this for any block, so let me do that for the flowing water, as well as maybe another demonstration block, such as maybe the redstone block. Alright, so as you can see, I've taken the color out of the redstone block, as well as both of the flowing and still water. So now we need to install our custom color map image into our resource pack. So let's back out of this folder, back into textures, and back into the Minecraft folder. Now within here, we need a folder entitled MC Patcher. As you can see, I already have one created. You may not, so just create a new folder in here and call it MC Patcher, no capitals or spaces. Let's head inside. Now these two folders are from previous episodes, so we can ignore them. We need a new folder in here entitled Color Map. There we go. And let's head inside. Now inside of this folder, we need a new folder entitled Custom. Now, there are two locations we can install our custom color maps. And it is very crucial on where you install your custom color map. So as you can see on my image, the two folders that I just created are represented. We have the color map folder, which is this one here. And we have the custom folder, which is this folder here. Now, underneath you'll see a list of what goes inside each of those folders. So in the color map folder, we have those special color maps which are added in by Optifine, such as the swamp grass and foliage and the pine and birch leaves, which are in blue because those make up for in-game errors, and the additional ones for water, fog, sky, and lava. So all those color maps must go in the color map folder. And any in-game block you want to colorize, such as our redstone block we are demonstrating, you must put inside of the custom folder. So I hope that's straightforward and I hope you can see that because that is crucial in order for this method to work. Now, underneath those two folders, you'll notice two properties files. These images are activated by different properties files. So I will explain that in one second. For now, I'm just gonna create a few demo color maps and install them in the game and we will show you how to activate those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this image a few times here. Just because I don't feel like creating multiple custom color maps just for demonstration purposes. So as you can see, we have four color maps here and I'm gonna create one for the water. So we're gonna title it water. Now the important thing is is the color maps on the left hand side that go within the color map folder must be named exactly as I have listed underneath. So if you wanted to do swamp grass, you would name it swamp grass and so on. So that is why I named that one water. So if we wanted to do it for the sky, we would type sky zero. And once again, we put it in the color map folder because that is where it shows on our image. Now, if I wanted to make one for the redstone block, which I do, I can name this whatever I want, but I am gonna keep it somewhat organized and just call it redstone block. And now we need to install that inside of this custom folder. So we will drop it in here. So I hope I'm being clear and I hope you understand. And you can see where to install these image files. And this last color map, maybe we will make for the fog. There we go, so let's install this into this folder and I named it incorrectly, it is actually fog zero. So there we go, we have four custom color maps installed. Now we need to activate them in the game with 
properties files. All right, so let's start off by activating these three color map files into the game. These are the ones within the color map folder. Now you'll notice on the image underneath, it says they need to be activated with color.properties. So let's create that properties file. So on Mac, I'm using text edit. On Windows, you can use notepad. We're gonna head inside and we're gonna make sure we make it a plain text. And if you're on Mac, once again, head into preferences and change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one. Now within this document, there's only one thing we need to specify for these color maps. And that is the format in which we created our color maps, which in this case is grid. Now the parameter we're gonna type in is palette dot format equals, and now we type our format. Once again, you have grid, vanilla, or fixed. So we used grid in this case, so we type grid. Now there are tons of other parameters you can actually put within this color dot properties because this color.properties comes from a mod called Custom Colors, which is integrated into Optifine. Now I'm gonna be covering that in depth in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. For now, this is all we need to install into our color.properties. So let's hit save. And now we need to call it color.properties, exactly. Make sure we spell it right. And if we're on a Mac, change the encoding to Western Windows Latin 1. There we go, make sure that name is exactly right. And this box is unchecked. We'll click save and we'll see it appear on our desktop. Now, where we install this properties file is not what you would expect. We actually need to back out and install it within the MC Patcher folder. So keep that in mind. We install it within the MC Patcher folder. So that's where you put your properties file. So this properties file will now activate all three of these images. So here I am back in game. I just wanted to quickly show you that it did indeed work. And as you can see already, the sky color as we change biomes changes. And I also have the fog cranked up just so we can see the fog demonstration. And you'll notice they're all the same color. And that's because I did just duplicate the same color map file four times. So the color map is the same for all of these options. And you'll notice the water color also is the same. And they're all the same color. So in the swamp, it's purple and you can see everything is purple. So now let's move on to colorizing this redstone block to match. All right, so let's head into our custom folder here. And now we need to create a properties file for our redstone block color map. So on Mac, I'm gonna open text edit once again. And we're gonna make sure we make it a plain text and have the encoding and everything set correctly. Now I will pull up an image from the previous episode, which we went over, which shows some of the options for this properties file. Now we can add in our format, which once again, we have three options and ours is grid. Now we need to add in the blocks, which we want this color map to be applied to. And in our case, we want the redstone block. So let's head in game and figure out what to type in for redstone block. Here we are in game. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we push F3 and H to show the advanced tool tips. Highlight over the block in question, and we wanna check the name underneath. Now we can see it's Minecraft with a colon and then redstone block. That is the official name for the redstone block in game. So that is what we are gonna type. Now I wanna make a quick note here about metadata values. So if we were to do it to stone as well, we see this stone has a metadata value of zero, which is the number that follows the slash after the number on the right hand side of the name. And this stone has a metadata value of one. So if we wanted to specify the metadata value in our document, we would do a colon and then the metadata value. So let me do an example in the document here. So first we'll add in our redstone block, which is what we want it to apply to. Make sure we keep the name with an underscore there. And now if we wanted to add in a metadata value, we would put a colon and then a number. So for stone, it would be stone colon one. Now it will apply the color map to the stone block with the metadata value of one. So that's just a quick note on how you add in metadata values if you are looking to do so. Our next required parameter is the source of the image 
which once again we went over this quick little method on how to say relative to this properties file. So the game's going to search relative to where this file is located. It's going to look for the redstone block.png. And that's what our image is called. So it's going to search for that image. So let's save our document and see how it appears in game. So we'll hit save and we want to make sure we it's a dot properties file. We can call it anything we want once again. There we go, redstone.properties. And we want to change the encoding to Western Windows Latin 1. We'll hit save. And now where we install this properties file is within the custom folder as well. So let's clarify where to install everything. If you're using those nine methods on the side, we install the PNG files within the color map folder. And we install the color.properties files, which activates these nine images specifically. We install that properties file in the MC Patcher folder, and it is called color.properties. Now, for any in game block that we want to apply a custom color map to, they must go within custom, and the properties file must also go in this folder as well. And there must be a separate properties file for this color map. So that is how you activate all of your custom color maps. So let's head in game and see if it worked. Here we are back in game. I'm going to reload my pack. And we notice that it worked. I got a little scared because I didn't see a change there. However, we'll notice as we place the block within different biomes, it matches the color map of that we specified. As you can see so that is how you add in those custom color maps now there are a couple optional parameters which i will quickly just touch on i'm not going to demonstrate them because they are difficult now these optional parameters are only for the custom in-game block method so it's only for the properties file that we install within this custom folder so it can only be applied to any in-game block and that would be the Y variance and Y offset parameter. What the Y variance will do is these are also both only for the grid format. The Y variance will, instead of picking a fixed Y value, it will just vary it across your color map. So that will create a bit more variety in your color map. And the Y offset, you can actually offset your entire color map by a given Y value. So those are both looking for a numerical value. So I hope that helped you guys out with these custom color maps. And if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned because I'll be coming out with another video covering custom colors and more things of that nature. So have a good day.